Hello everybody. I uh, recently made a video showing everybody all the different varieties of mango trees I had. And a few people asked uh, if I could describe each mango. And I will make more videos getting in great detail about the different mangoes that I have. But I recently uploaded another video which was a mango farm or an exotic fruit place that I went to. They sell all exotic fruits and they described some of the different type of mangoes but that even wasn't in the most amazing detail. However, however, this is amazing. There's a place here called the Mango Place. And if anyone watches YouTube and watches videos about mangoes, you know how amazing this lady is, Chris, who owns the property, and how great her videos are. She makes videos describing a whole bunch of different mangoes. And I've interviewed her on my show several times on this channel. But I look back at some video I found from when I went there, one of the first times I went there, and I started going there all the time. They don't live far from my house. They're in Delray, Florida. And there's a guy that works for her named Har. And the guy's like the mango genius. He knows so much about all the different mangoes. So I got a chance to uh, look at that video again. And he did great information. Again, a whole bunch of mangoes that I tasted way back when. But I didn't think to write them down or monitor them. Or at that time, I didn't even have property to get any mangoes. So I guess I wasn't as serious at that time as I am now. As I said... I got serious about mangoes after I tasted, I mean I had my lemon meringue and my curry mango, but after I tasted the pineapple pleasure last year, I was like, wow, wow, I got to get me some mango trees, some new varieties. And I really got into the different varieties, and I've tasted many, many, many since then. Uh, but this is another great place here. I'll put the updated information below, contact them, but here, check this flashback of this great video out to learn about these wonderful varieties of different types of mangoes and great detail about them all right and if you're in South Florida get to this place I don't know if they do mail order they might they might but get there here's Chris uh, the owner of the farm and she has a great blog Chris say hello to the audience well hi I uh, hope you all are able to to come and see the place in person um, it's just the beginning of mango season and we have tons of mangoes, mango varieties that are yet to ripen and they're all fun. So come on down and check our blog, uh, delrymango.blogspot.com uh, to see what our hours are and what varieties we have ripe. And I've been living down here in Florida for over 10 years and I, I've never heard of you until recently a friend told me about you and pretty much most of your business is word of mouth, right? Yes, it, um, we have uh, quite a quite a range of customers um, from uh, you know just every walk of life um, a lot of people from other countries that have grown up with wonderful mangoes and and know that the ones that they are buying it or that they sell in the supermarket are really not um, you know representative of the, the mango and so they'll they'll come uh, from long distances uh, we've had people come uh, well, we have a couple of customers in Orlando that make a few treks uh, a, a season, and uh, we had one gentleman from Arizona that that flies in for mangoes. I, I think it wasn't once or twice last year. I don't I think know. It was three or four times. Oh, three or four. Well, times. Tell us your name again. Har Madin. Har Madin. So, can you tell us about some of these different varieties of all these wonderful mangoes you have available? This is Cog's Hall. The fruit, besides being beautiful, are fiber-free and sweet and tart. Very good flavor. The tree is smallish and an extra good-looking tree compared to most other mango trees. The foliage is dark and the canopy is dense. And as I say, the tree is easy to keep small. It's super productive and very early to early. And is the skin edible on that? No, I don't think so. Okay. The, the Dwarf Hawaiian, also very early and mid-season and late because it produces multiple crops per year. As you can see, it does have problems with anthracnose, but that's about the only knock against it. The flavor is excellent. Uh, I like the edible skins on it, and 
the fact that the tree is small, dwarfish, and is usually flowering when it has fruit on and then does two or three more crops in the season is very impressive. Floragon is super early, very early to early, and uh, is usually completely clean, disease free, super productive, no fiber. Uh, the flavor is distinctive. Uh, you may like it or may not. It, it's a very different flavor from most of the other mangoes. Uh, I do like it. What are those? These, I believe, are Pimsane Moon. We have a tree here labeled Quidno also that's very similar, and I have a hard time telling the two apart. <laughs> uh, both have fiber-free, excellent flavored flesh. Uh, the fruit are usually quite clean and pretty. Occasionally a few spots on it, so it's not totally immune to anthracnose, but most of the fruit are clean. The tree is super productive and early. And when they fall on the ground, they usually do not bruise. Glen, an old variety here from Florida. The tree has a similar appearance to the Cog's Hall, the dark, uh, attractive foliage and dense canopy. It's not quite as early as Cog's Hall most years, but it is an early variety. Uh, fiber free and usually a, a good rich flavor. And some people eat the skin uh, and nose. Uh, so I hear. <laughs> uh, I haven't chosen that as one of the ones that I consider to be a tasty skin. But yeah, it, it's not awfully bitter like some. Uh, sometimes the early fruit, it, the earliest ones in the season are low in flavor. But by this time of the year, they are rich flavored. The Nam Dok Mai, a real old time variety from uh, Thailand. Nam means water and Dok Mai means flower. So uh, it means uh, nectar, sweet as nectar, uh, water of flower. It's fiber free, a very long flat seed case but with a very tiny seed in it. So the, the seed and the seed husk don't take up much room. Uh, very good distinctive flavor, uh, usually clean, occasionally a little bit of anthracnose. Uh, these also tend to not to bruise very badly when they fall unless you let the tree get really big. They are a medium sized tree but they're easy enough to keep small and if you have mulch under the tree they usually don't bruise when they fall except maybe right at the tip when the tip hits. Here's some more of the Pim Sang Moon. Uh, fully colored up. More Glen. These are Kerry. The first of the famous varieties produced by the Zill family. Named after Miss Kerry Zill who was the, the grandma uh, of the Zill family. Uh, the fruit is very thin skinned, often does it not color up very much. You have to have a good eye to see it, to get it before it falls. And that is important because the skin is so thin and the, the flesh is so entirely fiber free and soft that it bruises even if it only falls six or 10 inches uh, when it's ripe. If it falls when it's still green like this, that's all right. Uh, very rich flavor, uh, much preferred for making ice cream and other cooked goods uh, because the flavor is strong enough to still be noticeable as a mango flavor after cooking or, or freezing. Uh, certainly uh, don't get the idea that it's not good uh, fresh. It is one of the most sought after mangoes to eat fresh. It is, however, so powerfully flavored that some people are set back by it. Uh, but it's one of our most sought after mangoes by connoisseurs. These are some more Floragon fully colored up. These are Hayden. 
Hayden was the first famous variety to originate in Florida from a Mulgoba that someone got grafted from India and planted by a turpentine tree. And when they planted Mulgoba seeds hoping to get something like Mulgoba, they got Hayden, which turned out was much better for Florida. Mulgoba gets absolutely huge but doesn't fruit very much, whereas the Hayden took on uh, much of the fruitful characteristic of the turpentine. Uh, it also took the fiber of the turpentine. Not as fibrous as turpentine, as turpentine, but it's quite stringy. In fact, the word stringy is the name of turpentines in Jamaica. And uh, turpentines are much appreciated for flavor, not for texture. Uh, people who know how to eat turpentines will bruise them while they're whole, and then bite a little hole in the end and squeeze the juice out and leave all the fiber still sticking to the seed. That's the way to eat turpentine. Now Hayden is not that fibrous that you have to do that with. People do normally cut them with a knife and eat all the pulp and fiber. Uh, Hayden tends to produce very heavily one year and then rest the next year, or produce just a few. Hayden is one of the more beautiful fruits on earth when it's clean, but it is very susceptible to anthracnose, which can spoil the whole fruit and certainly makes many of them ugly. And the trees are hard to keep small, they get huge, and are therefore hard to pick. What about my favorite ones here? Yes, the Popucalai. Actually, the. That's a lemon meringue. Uh, no, I, I, I probably put that there. Yeah, the Popucalai has a Florida nickname of lemon meringue, but it is an old named variety from Burma, and the name is Popucalai. And this is what they look like when they're fully colored up. Uh, the sap, when you first pick the fruit, does smell like lemon meringue pie, and that's where the name comes from. When you eat the pulp, however, you'll get a little bit of a lemony flavor, but it doesn't really taste like lemon meringue pie. It tastes like a top-rate mango. This is one of our most sought-after mangoes. Almost all our customers like the Popu Kalai. By the way, the Popu Kalai was introduced to Florida by Mr. Maurice Kong, uh, longtime president of the Miami Rare Fruit Council. Wonderful. And let's talk about the Rosa, and then that's, I guess that's it for today. The Rosa is from Brazil. Uh, it's not named after a Ms. Rose. It's named because Rosa in Portuguese means pink colored, rose colored. And like the Hayden, the Rosa is one of the more beautiful fruits anywhere when it's clean, but it like the Hayden, is extremely susceptible to anthracnose on the fruit skin. Not on the, on the blossoms. The tree is quite resistant to anthracnose and powdery mildew on the blossoms, and it is a consistent heavy producer that's uh, about the earliest mango you can find anywhere. It's a very early mango. This one's not a rose. The, the rosa is quite fibrous, even more fibrous than the Hayden. The skin of the rosa is very strong tasting resinous flavor, which I really like. Uh, I eat all the skin that isn't the anthracnose spots. So you eat the skin on nose? On the rosa, yes. Most mangoes have unpalatable skins, but rosa uh, has a very tasty skin to me because I like resinous flavors. Wonderful. How many different varieties do you have here? Ms. Chris Wenzel has about 50 varieties producing here on the place, mango varieties. There are several hundred in Florida and several thousand mango varieties in the world. 
this is another variety it actually uh, was patented years ago the patent has now run out on it it's called the Duncan it has a distinctive flavor uh, some of our customers only want Duncan unless there aren't any Duncan and then they'll, they'll get something else another of our customers don't look for it at all so it it's a flavor that some people really go after and others don't uh, notice a lot. It is extremely disease resistant and highly productive every year. And uh, good uh, texture. Wonderful. So that's Duncan. How early and how late does the mango season start and end? Well, it, it really depends on the weather. This has been an early year um, because we had a warm winter. Um, our mangoes started in the end of March, or first weekend of April, uh, but the selection gets better all the time and now um, we're really getting a lot of, of uh, great mangoes available and um, they'll be strong through um, sometime in August and we'll have a few going sometimes into September. And your hours are posted on your blog. They're, they're different each day, right? Yeah, uh, we're always open Saturday morning. Uh, we're open for several uh, days during the week. Uh, definitely Monday, Wednesday, and Thursdays, and there'll be a couple hours each day. And um, we're still working on what hours work out best for most of our customers. And so hopefully that will be set uh, in the next week or so and for the rest of the season. Wonderful. Now, what's your favorite mango? Uh, it depends on what's ripe, <laughs> okay. it's, uh, and and it also depends on uh, on what you're using it for. I, I have you know if I had one favorite mango, I'd probably just grow one variety. But there's so many, there's so much range of flavors and textures and uses of mangoes that uh, you know it's there's a reason to have every one of the 50 varieties. And you don't just have mangoes here, you have uh, various other tropical fruits as well, right? Yeah, it's probably 90% um, mangoes, but then we grow things like uh, jabotacaba, black sapote, mame sapote, uh, sugar apples, atamoya, uh, carambola, um, I, uh, well, uh, caimito, sapodilla, uh, and um, tamarind, and... Basically you have and jackfruit. So basically you have a, a raw food is paradise here. Yeah, I hope yes. so. Yes, you absolutely do. And I want to recommend everyone to come on out here when you're in Florida, South Florida. You definitely got to come here and check it out. And thank you so much. <laughs> Actually, um, I put these small, these are dwarf um, mango trees right here. I trim them every year to make them extra dwarf. Um, but um, people often say they don't have room for a fruit tree or whatever. And, you know, it just takes up a real small area and they always produce fruit. Um, so how many mangoes would you say one of these small dwarf trees would get? Um, easily like 20. 20. Yeah. And do you call them dwarf trees because you keep them small or because they're actually a breed that's a dwarf? Um, yeah, there, there are about four varieties that are dwarf and, and um, these are uh, uh, alternating Cogs Hall and, and Neelum and um, they're just good all around mangoes for uh, sure. dwarf. Uh, how it, many varieties do you have here? Um, we have over 50. Um, Great. It's, uh, it always changes, always planting new stuff and taking out stuff that we don't, and gra grafting things over if we don't like it. This is, um, I don't think there's any fruit on it now, but the, these two plants are Jabotacaba. Oh, yay, yay, there is. This is cool. Jabotacaba tree, okay. So. Look at that, they go right out of the branch, everybody. These are like the most delicious grapes you've ever had. Almost similar to muscadine grapes, but even better. And, and uh, look at that. Native to Brazil, I think, right? Right, and, yeah. it, and very high in antioxidants. They, uh, there's people who come just for this fruit. Um, it's a, a low quad. Um, sapodilla. All right, there's a sapodilla tree. You know what variety that is? Alano. Uh, Alano. Uh, I just got a brown sugar. Yep, brown sugar's uh, a little bit uh, grittier. I like yeah. that, yeah. Um, this is a smoother fruit, and I've got some varieties that haven't really started producing yet that have very large fruit, um, which uh, newer varieties. Let's see if I can find the right fruit for this. This what? is um, Caimito or Star Apple. Oh, okay. Yeah. That's, uh, Caimito. 
so that's that. And it's um, it starts um, in February or March, and uh, tastes sort of like a melon, but it's much softer. Um, tamarind. Tamarind tree here. Okay. Is it sweet tamarind or non-sweet? Well, it's it's a sort of a, a um, they they have this is a little bit younger than I usually eat them, um, but uh, they the um, the name tamarind um, is actually um, means like date from India. It's not related to the date, but the fruit itself is very similar to a date. I don't know if you want you want to try Absolutely. that, but this. Uh, Nice. One of the dwarf varieties that I have up front, but it's really uh, a nice fruit. Uh, so, uh, did you what variety is this? Dwarf Hawaiian. It has a little coconut flavor to it. I don't know, but do you have any up front? Yeah. Okay, I'll get one. I'll, I'm going to write on it with the marker too. Dwarf Hawaiian. Yeah. Tastes like a coconut. It's a mango. Yeah, mango, coconut together. This is. Um, Unfortunately, it doesn't produce a lot, but that's a Ryan. Ryan, okay. And this one is um, Tommy Atkins. And what? Here you go with these. Those are Namdak Mai. Namdak Mai. We've had these. These go uh, throughout the season, I believe. It's um, it'll go for at least another month, probably a month and a half. But so these are all lychee trees here. Right. Nice. Brewster and Mauritius. Here's a jackfruit tree, and uh, wow, look at that. How wow! How we've already harvested one. Harvested one. How much do you think that one weighs? That's a big one. Uh, that that'll end up being probably 35 pounds or something like that. Wow! Look at that. So they, nice. Yeah, and then um, yeah, we've got, we've got another one this this side, but. Uh, all right, everybody, I told you, wasn't that amazing? Uh, they're both amazing. Chris is amazing, and Har is amazing, and that whole place is amazing. And you can trust me, as soon as mango season starts, I will be one of the first people there this year, uh, hanging out there and doing more videos and tasting more mangoes. They are just wonderful, wonderful people and a wonderful place. Great history to that farm, and I'll be there. So if you haven't just subscribed yet to my channel, please do so. And I'm just going to try to keep giving you as much information as possible to help you keep growing. Have a blessed day.